Hello everyone and welcome to week four. Uh, this week our topic is genre in technical communication. That's a very important topic and something that is not only a part of our reading and knowledge learning in this course but is going to be a huge component in your uh, tech MGM projects in this course. So I'm not going to cover everything that you'll be reading about in, your, uh, in, uh, in the chapter assigned for this week. I'll be focusing on the more important stuff that uh, I need to clarify. I need um, maybe I send some or I'm expecting some confusion or some questions to arise. So hopefully this presentation and this lecture will help you understand uh, some of these concepts, okay? The rest of the chapter is going to be mostly the heuristic and the extended example and I think by now you understand the function of these two sections and I don't need to talk much about them in my presentation. So let's get started. Uh, today I'll be talking about three main things. Uh, what is genre? Why is genre knowledge important in technical communication? and the key principles in technical communication, okay? So let's get started. And we'll start by watching that fun video. Uh, let's watch it first and then I'll talk about it. Okay, I'll stop here and you can watch the rest of the video. I'll be posting the link on Blackboard, uh, but you get the, the, the point of it. Uh, one of my favorite ways of explaining genre is to use music and movie genres because these are close to students and it helps bring the concept of genre home to all my students. So, for example, uh, I like pop, rock, and sometimes country music. These are my favorite. Uh, so I can recognize these genres so easily through the rhythm, beat, and instruments, lyrics, uh, among other features of these songs when I listen to them. This means that, that each music genre or movie genre has set features that help the listener or viewer 
to identify the genre right away. So, no, we're not going to play it again. <laughs> so, what exactly is genre? So, genre is a social action or what a technical communicator uses to achieve purpose within a particular situation. Um, what does this mean? It means that the social aspect of genre refers to the shared or a community understanding and expectations of what each genre should accomplish. So, uh, let me give you a very good example back to the uh, movie and music. We already saw the music one. Let's now talk about uh, me, uh, movie genres. Um, Hallmark Channel movies are a specific genre of movies. When the audience or viewers turn to Hallmark Channel, they expect to watch movies in a certain genre. Romance. Yay! They also have particular expectations of Hallmark movies, not, not just like any romance they might watch in the movie theater or on TV. Uh, so normally they expect or uh, the genre expectations are uh, mostly white, dashing, beautiful, handsome actors and actresses. Uh, what we call clean movies that are suitable for the entire family and children to watch. Uh, usually or not usually actually, it's always have a happy ending. I've never seen anyone that doesn't have a happy ending so far doesn't discuss controversial topics. You never see anything that discusses race or violence or blues, uh, police br brutality. We, we don't see any of that, any of these topics discussed in Hallmark Channel, uh, channel movies or the romance movies. Uh, the producers of Hallmark movies understand these expectations very well and are thus able to produce movies that connect the audience to these movies by following these expectations. If a producer decides to use swear wor words, for example, uh, the audience will be shocked and many will feel resentful of the movie because it violated their expectations, their specific genre expectations of a Hallmark Channel uh, movie. So this, this gets us to the concept of social action or the job of the technical communicator or the producer of the movie, as in the example I just uh, used, should connect the audience to the genre by following genre expectations or conventions. Okay, let's look at uh, a kind of technical communication example rather than the movie example. So, this is a very fun story and experience. So, this past summer, I was tasked with creating a document of course projects in the, um, our new certificate, the um, Professional and Technical Writing Certificate Program at AUM. Uh, my target audience was supposed to be clients, like people working in, uh, in Tech MGM and other business, businesses that may want to collaborate with us on these projects. So, I produced this document, the one on the left. <clears throat> I can hear your size now, okay? So, sorry about that. That was a big rhetorical fail. Why? Because I assumed that my audience would care about the course objectives, readings, and other academic aspects of the course. As you can see, I'm including like course requirements, textbook, course description, credit hours. It's like, why should they care about that? So then when I looked at that one and then I, show, I showed it to some of my colleagues, it's like, no, 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 no. This is not what these people are looking for. This is not what they are expecting to see in this document. Then I had to reconsider my strictly academic approach to a more rhetorical and social one, which resulted in the second document, this one, the one on the right. Much better, right? I agree. I totally agree. So this is exactly what happened and this illustrates or demonstrates uh, the social action <clears throat> of genre. People have certain expectations of and they need certain information to be communicated and if I fail, if the technical communicator, if the technical writer fails to communicate this particular information and addresses 
these particular needs and expectation, then the audience won't get what they wanted from that document in the first place. This gets us to, uh, or my document design experience is a good example of the next principle as well, which is typification. So what happened is I identified the type of genre so wrongly in my first attempt. I thought they needed to know how academically rigorous or our curriculum was, and I wanted to give them a syllabus-like document. Ah, oh, face palm, yes. Once I was able to identify the genre I should use, something like a flyer or an information sheet that's well designed to communicate the needed information very quickly and very easily to busy clients, um, this document should communicate the projects these clients may uh, identify with and relate to. I created a good and successful document, the second one that you saw, that cut shortly to the nature of the projects and provided other information clients needed to know. Like for example, our email addresses, Dr. Witcher's and my email addresses, uh, which semester this course is offered in, and, and so on. So this is the kind of information they needed to know right away. I also succeeded in using genre conventions to produce that document. So not so much text, clear font, matching professional colors, adequate space, correct amount of information. So this means that I, I was successful in identifying the type of situation, the type of genre, and then used these genre conventions to produce a document that was successful in achieving its purpose and its goal with that particular audience. Now, I'm hearing some of you now may ask, wait a minute, does that mean that every time I'll produce a document in a certain genre, it will look exactly the same as previous document in that genre? That's kind of boring. What's the point? I, I totally understand and I hear you. And let me tell you that no. That's why under genre and choice, I like to uh, put a different heading into to that section and uh, use limitations and creativity because this section in particular in the reading is talking about the limitations of genre, expectations and conventions, and the role of creativity in creating uh, uh, good uh, documents that meet the genre expectations as well. So while there are certain genre expectations that technical communicators should follow, there is always room for creativity. You can assess each situation and decide where you can be creative within the limits of uh, and expectations of the genre. For example, you can use cartoon images rather than photos of real people if you are addressing children. You don't have to be very strict and find uh, real people images or pictures. This is kind of boring, but creating something like the one you can see on the screen with cartoon uh, characters or cartoon image of real people. So th this is more fun and this is one uh, form or one example of creativity. While you are still using images of people, you are addressing children. So it's like, I'm not going to use images of real people. I'm going to just use cartoon images or bitmoji or something like that. So something more fun for students and something that attracts students, uh, sorry, uh, children attention. So you followed the genre expectations of using images, but you became creative in using cartoon or bitmoji images rather than real pictures. So this uh, brings us to the last uh, concept or the last principle I'll be talking about, which is genre and change. So think of how businesses promoted events in the past. Okay, genre and change is very connected to the choice because genre is not rigid. Uh, genre, yes, I, we may have the same genre as it is, but it evolves with time because of new technologies, new products and events, new audiences. So for example, if one product used to target teenagers and then they decided that, uh, no, maybe teenagers are not really our best target audience. We should address maybe more like middle-aged or 
uh, may, uh, adults in their 30th or something, then they will use the same genre, but they need to change some of the expectations and conventions to suit the new audience. So genre change is a response to situation changes. Let me give you a, a quick example here. Well, the, um, think of how businesses used to promote events in the past. They usually relied on flyers, sometimes even not colored, like sometimes it's just like in grayscale, newspaper ads, uh, maybe TV commercials and things like that. How do businesses promote events now? How do you get to know about business uh, about events? Normally through social media events, uh, websites, digital flyers, promotion videos, and even TikTok videos right now. Okay, so this is how you get to know. Somebody will see something, they will text it to you, they will text a link, and then you can access that link and see a, a, a video or see the details on the website. Nobody relies on static flyers or TV commercials, especially if targeting younger generation who don't really watch much TV anyway. So while the genre is still promoting or marketing, this is a genre here, okay? Um, the genre evolved because of the changing technologies and communication methods from static paper-based or TV-based uh, uh, products or uh, documents to more digitally uh, born uh, type of documents like videos and TikTok videos and websites and things like that. So I think what I'm trying to say is that genre is a good way to illustrate writing as knowledge and writing as a skill that we discussed in week three. As a technical communicator, you need the knowledge of genre conventions and expectations. Then you use your skill to create documents that meet those expectations while using your creativity to respond to the rhetorical and social situation and maybe add and respond to a change in the situation by using a new technology or uh, thinking of new audience that you may address. Uh, I didn't address much of why the knowledge of genre is benefit or is useful for, uh, for you as technical communicators, but I hope that by now you, you are able to uh, name some of the benefits of learning about genre in technical communication, not just again for the sake of knowledge and the sake of learning, but for the sake of producing and putting this knowledge into action, into practice in your tech, in your tech MGM projects. Okay, so I hope this has explained some of the concepts and some of the principles about genre that the textbook addresses. And I hope now that you can read the, the chapter and focus more on the heuristics and um, the extended example of James, and then, is it James? Or did I get the name wrong? I hope it's James. I hope I got the name right this time. Okay, and then after that, move on to our discussion uh, prompt for this week that uh, you will find a kind of uh, document, and I give you some examples in the, in the prompt, and we have four documents available on Blackboard that you can just grab one and start using it, and instead of uh, grabbing, uh, uh, spending some time searching for another one, and then do the analysis and then do the reflection at the end. Uh, I'm looking forward to a better and more engaged discussion of genre uh, on Slack. See you there.